Monkey. Devin Haney versus George Kambosis 2 is official and it will be happening in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, just as we expected, the rematch would happen in Australia. We didn't know whether it would be in you know, Melbourne or if it would be in Sydney or in Brisbane, but it is going to be in Melbourne. So from what I've seen, most people are not interested in this fight because Devin Haney easily outpointed George Kambosis in the last fight. And even with George Kambosis, you know, he's been insinuating that, you know, if he doesn't win against Devin Haney, that he will retire. You know, in the last fight, in the build-up to the last fight, this guy was saying, you know, I'm the emperor, and so on and so forth. But as soon as he's taken his first loss, he's thought to himself, you know what, if I lose again, I'm just going to hang my gloves up. And I don't necessarily blame him because, you know, your health is more important than you know, boxing, you've got a life outside of boxing. So if he wants to retire, if he wants to be healthy, you know, you can't really blame George Kambosis in that sense. But yeah, his whole demeanor has changed since losing to Devin Haney. He's a lot more quiet and he seems to have the challenger mindset. He did mention that, you know, going into the Haney fight, you know, with him having all the belts and with him being in Australia and having the home crowd that, you know, he didn't necessarily feel as if he was the underdog and he essentially needs to feel that, you know, he is the overwhelming underdog. Even though the odds had, you know, Devin Haney winning the fight, you know, the fact that Cambosis had the belts and he, he was home and Devin Haney was fighting away, far, far from home, probably made him feel like he had a very, very good chance. You know, from my understanding, Cambosis took this fight, you know, and he was only going to take this fight if he was receiving the bulk of the money. So I don't know what, you know, money he made in the first fight. But from what I also know, he's also going to make the majority of the money in the second fight. That it was inserted into the contract that regardless of the result in the first fight, Cambosis would um, be the one who receives more money in the second fight. And from, you know, if you're putting two and two together and hearing him talk about retirement, you can infer that, you know, he wanted, you know, the bulk of the money so... Now, if he were to lose to Haney, if it wasn't to work out that he can go retire and he can have a lot of money, you know, essentially to work with for the rest of his life. And you've got to give credit to George Kambosis. As a boxer, you have a small amount of time, a small window of opportunity to make the most money possible. And in uh, these Haney fights, the first fight and now in the second fight, you know, he's um, receiving a lot of money. So you've got to give credit to him. But just in terms of the matchup outside of, you know, the politics of boxing, I guess you could say, yeah, most people are not interested in this fight. You know, I see Haney easily outpointing um, George Cambosis. De Devin Haney's footwork, his jab was exceptional in the first fight. For me, Devin Haney, I've said it before, but alongside him and Shakur Stevenson are the best in boxing. And just in terms of pure skills, nothing else, just in terms of, you know, uh, technical point of view I, I like what those two fighters do and I feel like they're the most technical fighters in all of boxing alongside maybe let's say Terence Crawford you know I don't think George Cambosis has the tools or can make the adjustments you know to beat Devin Haney and that's not a knock on George Cambosis it just says how good Haney is you know people who are saying why is this rematch happening you know Cambosis activated a rematch clause so there's nothing Devin Haney could really do about it. I suspect that if this is not his last fight, I'm talking about Devin Haney here, this may be his second last fight at lightweight because I think he owes top rank one more fight. And I suspect after this fight, Lomachenko would be his last fight at 135 pounds and he might move up. I think, you know, Devin Haney and was talking about essentially, you know, his dad will decide what's next for him, you know, maybe he doesn't want to make, I uh, do one more big weight cut, maybe it's just too strenuous on him, you know, because he did look very dry in the weigh-in, and that's very, very dangerous, you know, you struggle to make all that weight, losing all the weight, you're killing yourself to make the weight, you won't feel 100% once you're in the ring, so he just may have to move up to 140, if not, 
after this fight, after one more fight against somebody like Olomachenko. And I've said it time and time again, I'm, out of all of the fighters currently, I'm most impressed with Devin Haney because when Lomachenko had the belt, he, you know, he wanted that fight. He was pressing Lomachenko. Lomachenko uh, got the franchise title. You know, when Tiafimo was, you know, they say undisputed. From my knowledge, he was unified because Devin Haney had the real WBC belt by that time. So when Tiafimo was a unified champion, Haney wanted to fight Tiafimo. Tiafimo lost to Lomachenko. Not Lomachenko, my apologies, he beat Lomachenko. When Tiafimo lost to Cambosis, Devin Haney wanted to fight George Cambosis, and he was finally able to, you know, get his man and become the undisputed lightweight champion of the world. So it's interesting. Now, I wonder if Cambosis will make weight this time around. You know, I don't know what that was about, you know, missing weight. Devin Haney is a much bigger lightweight, you know, than Cambosis himself. Devin Haney's probably going to finish his career at 147, 154 pounds, to be honest. So, you know, Cambosis is nowhere near as big as Haney, so he should be making weight because he's naturally smaller, whereas Haney is a huge lightweight. So the weight cut, I suspect, is a lot harder for Haney, or sh it should be harder because Devin Haney probably walks around a lot heavier than Cambosis. At least in muscle-to-fat ratio, Devin Haney has got more lean muscle tissue and probably less body fat so you know you're bringing down muscle and you're depleting um, water weight just to make the weight where Cambosis is probably pulling off more fat from his body and from his midsection rather than you know pure muscle tissue which is probably a little bit more easier in terms of cutting weight so those were just my quick thoughts on the rematch between Devin Haney and George Cambosis Jr. I have Haney winning this fight easily you know, I scored the last fight, you know, the first fight, 10 rounds to 2 in favour of Haney. So, will Devin Haney push for the stoppage this time? I know a lot of people were critical, say, you know, Haney's boring and so on and so forth. You know, that's his style. You know, let him be. Not everyone has to be a pressure fighter, a knockout artist, or do that rock and sock and boxing. You know, if he wants to be technical and fight on the outside and use his physical attributes to his advantage, then that's what he should do. You know, in these lighter weight classes, skills really do pay the bills. But, you know, obviously it'd be nice if there was a stoppage in this fight. If Cambosis is a little bit more ambitious and tries to pressure Haney, he might walk onto a right hand or a big counter and he might get buzzed. But if Cambosis is um, content with fighting at long range, you know, not really getting hurt or not really getting knocked out, then it might be a points decision again for Devin Haney and it will be a unanimous decision in my opinion. Alright guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Peace.